Welcome to Virtual YPSA! Hello cadets and welcome to the 2021 Virtual Youth Public Safety Academy. I'm Middlesex Sheriff Peter Katujian and I want to thank you for tuning in to the first of three planned virtual YPSA sessions. While we are disappointed we can't be together in person this year, we have put together a series of episodes focusing on important public safety topics. We hope you'll find these episodes fun and educational, beginning with today's session on fire safety. To get us started, I'll hand it off to YPSA Director Ken Doucette and Wilmington Fire Lieutenant Ryan Quigley. Good morning, cadets, and welcome to the Middlesex Sheriff's Office Virtual Youth Public Safety Academy. In years past, all of you, all of you and all of our partners have come to our facility. This year, we're taking the show on the road to the local communities, cities, and towns going out with our partners, and now we're going to bring the show into your living room. My name is Ken Doucette. I'm the Director of the Youth Public Safety Academy and Community Affairs for the Middlesex Sheriff's Office. My name is Lieutenant Ryan Quigley. I am the Fire Prevention Officer here at the Wilmington Fire Department. We are very excited for today's presentation. First, we want to thank Lieutenant Quigley, Chief Kavanaugh, and all the staff at the Wilmington Fire Department, one of the longtime partners of the Middlesex Sheriff's Office, for allowing us to come into their home away from home, their fire station, as today we talk about some fun fire safety tips, all the time while we're making one of America's classic comfort foods, the grilled cheese sandwich. Lieutenant Quigley, let's okay. go. Let's do it. And welcome to the Wilmington Fire Department uh, kitchen. Uh, Lieutenant Quigley's joining me. Lieutenant, so what I did was I brought from my home all my modern, all my conveniences for cooking. I have everything over here from the plates and the food that we're going to prepare. I, I brought my coffee pot so we can make some coffee or some tea. I got my Gronk newspaper right here so we can read about Gronk and his, his, his most recent antics. I got the paper towels ready to go. I got a candle going here for us, a little ambiance, telephone in case we get a phone call. I got all my spices, my oil, I got some salt and pepper, I got my, my, uh, my great recipe book right up here, my magazine, and then, um, you know, some water, Kleenex, in case we get runny noses or whatever, I got the cereal ready to go, and of course all the cooking area, um, and, and everything to clean up with. Uh, what do you think? Uh, now some of these things could um, be potential fire hazards, and I'd like to point them out to you. Just okay, because, sure. Sure. Uh, so first of all, here on the stove, um, we have our oven mitt, which is right over one of the burners that could that could catch fire. Oh, uh, because of uh, the pilot. The pilot, and uh, if and if it's on, then um, yeah. this is this is flammable, so it, it could okay. catch. Some other safety issues that I see here on the stove, uh, these tea bags right here, they really shouldn't be on the stove. Maybe off to the side. Oh, uh, I was from, just trying to make it easy to make our I tea. Know, for all I know. All right. I, yeah. All right. Good but, idea. Yeah. Again, I get these, you. the the wrappers are paper, and yeah. that, that could get um, could catch fire yeah. as well. Uh, also, with your cooking utensils, your spoons, your fork, your tongs, the spatula, you want to kind of keep them organized, maybe off to the side on a counter. For the same reason, they, uh, yep. they, they may not necessarily catch fire, but yep. they could get very hot. And I, um, I would always try to just keep it easy, keeping the handles right hand. hand yeah, I mean, that, that's, yeah. that's good, yeah. but it's, it's really um, not the best practice. Okay. So one of the best practices would be to maybe turn the, the handles away from the stove so that someone walking by doesn't accidentally knock it over oh, or like yourself a brother and sister well like something. exactly exactly yep. and then and, the, and you know what's happened a couple times actually now you mentioned that a couple times you know i got my my fluffy bathrobe on from sunday you morning you know yeah yep. um but a couple times i've caught the handle too so is that an issue or well it, that is an issue, and the the fluffy bathrobe might not be the best thing to wear while you're cooking. I, maybe a cooking apron. But I'm comfy. You are comfy, and you look great. But, however, the bathrobe is also right, flammable, yeah. and I, I don't think I. Okay, yeah, yeah, you don't want to wear that when you when you're cooking over open fire. Okay. Um, above the stove, I do like the spices you brought and the the reading material. However, it should not be up above the stove like this. Um, uh, the news or the the magazine, you know, that's yeah. that's paper. Yeah. That could that could get going. Um, tissues, great idea. Yeah. You know, we could get a, a runny nose, but yeah. they're also uh, flammable. And the box that they're in is oh. made out of cardboard. Yep. As okay. well as the cereal that you had brought in. 
Oh, the Cocoa Pebbles, my favorite. The Cocoa Pebbles, <laughs> yeah. And then similar to this oven mitt down here, you don't want to leave oven mitts up there either. Just yep. because there's a lot of heat, heat goes up, it could potentially mm -hmm. cause a, a fire. You know, and that's a great point because also the Cocoa Pebbles is my son's favorite. Yep. And he's a little smaller than I am, and I know he reaches up a lot. Yeah, you know, you never want to yeah. have, especially little kids, you, you never want to reach over the stove if okay. you can help it. Um, so it, it's best practice to, to keep your cooking area clean, neat, organized, and free of any um, extra, you know, stuff that could potentially be a fire hazard. So, L Lieutenant, question for you. I sure. try to make things really easy yep. for myself when I'm cooking in the kitchen. Okay. Uh, maybe sometimes that efficiency isn't a good idea, as you've pointed out so far. But I also, with my wiring here, yeah. I, I put all my wires together, nice and easy, only have to worry about a little area. What do you think about that? I mean, it, it does look convenient because all your wires are in one spot. However, it, it is another fire hazard. Um, you, you do not want to overload electrical circuits because it, it can cause the wires to get too hot and that could actually also potentially lead to a fire. Okay. Um, and we hear a lot about that at Christmas time too. We do hear right? a lot yeah. about that at Christmas yeah. okay. time. I mean, so yeah. it's... So same concept. Exactly, exactly. I mean, people like to use the extension cords and the surge protectors like that one down there and this one makes one outlet into three. Yep. But the problem is when you start putting too many things on one outlet, yep. it can overload the outlet, it yep. can generate a lot of heat and it could potentially lead to a fire okay. as well. So the best thing to do is not overload and even though it may be a little inconvenience, yep. Um, find a different spot for some of the, find a different outlet. Okay. I try to be really clean when I'm cooking. So okay. I keep all my rags and everything right by. Is yeah. That, any thoughts on that or? Um, I would keep the rags, again, I would keep the rags away from the stove just for the same reason as the oven mitt and the. Uh, oh, okay. Because yeah. they're all, it, it's also flammable. It's an open fire that we're cooking on with the stove. So, yep. and anything that could potentially catch fire, clothing, um, such as your robe, these, this oven mitt, the rags here, it, it, it's, it's best practice just to keep them away from the fire. Okay. Or I'm sorry, away from the stove. Stove in the flames, yeah. In the flames, yeah. And speaking of flames, you know, I got my candle for ambiance. I do. And I, I, lo I love the scented candles. Actually, my wife loves the scented candles. Yeah, yeah, house. mine too. Uh, it's lots on that, having the open flame. So the problem I see here with this open flame in particular is you have a candle burning right next to a newspaper and a roll of paper towel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, so again, paper, combustible, it can catch fire. Mm -hmm. It's also better to not have um, any candles burning while you're, while you're cooking near the stove. You could potentially knock it over by mistake, yep. and that could lead to other problems. Okay. So how about the oil that, that we have over the stove? Okay, yeah, the that. oil is... Uh, so I, I need that when I'm cooking my... You do need that when you're cooking. And all that. You're right, you're yeah. right. Cooking oil is yeah. great, and it's great to cook with, but it's also a hazard if it's uh, stored improperly. Yeah. So best practice for the oil as well as pretty much everything else here is just keep it away from the stove. Okay. Um, the, the only thing you really need on the stove would be your frying pan, and you obviously want to make sure that the handle is, is away so it doesn't get knocked over. All your cooking utensils, um, the pot holder, anything else, you want to keep it clear. All right. Well, to be honest with you, I'm a little embarrassed right now. Oh, it's okay. I'm Don't be. Great information. But, um, you know, in working with you folks and others, I, I, I understand that this is something that is fairly common in households. It is. It things. is. Uh, so why don't we do this? Why don't I go and let, let me reset. Let me set this up according to the, the safe way to do it. Okay. And then how about if we come back, we start that grilled cheese. That sounds like a great idea. Awesome. Awesome. Cool. Lieutenant Quigley, first, I can't thank you enough. As you look at the kitchen now, everything's all nice and neat. Everything is safe, most importantly. Yep. Obviously, your work at the academy, everything you've done here has paid off and it's helping a lot of people in the community, so nice job of that. Thank you. One last thing, though, I know you want to go. You said no robes, so let's just get rid of that. And now, let's make the best grilled cheese ever. One of the really cool things about making grilled cheese one of everybody's favorite comfort food, by the way, is you only need a few things uh, as far as ingredients and then the um, items that you're going to need to actually prepare it. So we have the butter, we have the bread. I'm a wheat bread guy, by the way. 
And today I did bring two forms of cheese because I like the yellow, others do like the white cheese. You need your plate, you need a knife, a spatula, and then of course your, your skillet with the handle pointing in. So first we're going to preheat our pan. We're going to turn our gas on medium. Or set if you have an electric stove at home, you're going to set that on medium. So I'm going to put that right there. And now we're going to come over to the bread. We're going to butter our first piece of bread. Again, I'm a wheat bread guy, so I know many people like white bread. And then if people decide to bump up the game, some people will use some Italian bread, that type of thing. And I'm going to put that bread, the first piece, into the skillet. I am a two-piece of cheese guy. I like putting two pieces of cheese on my, on my grilled cheese. So, put my first piece in. And of course, if you wanted to mix things up, you could do a piece of white and a piece of yellow or whatever you like. And then, of course, people put a lot of different things on their grilled cheese. They'll put tomatoes, uh, bacon, that type of thing. We can also add... Our second piece of bread, throw some butter on that. Oh, again, oh, almost forgot to keep my handle in. Don't want to be knocking that off onto some little person that may be watching. And then we put that on. And then this will go for about three minutes before we flip it. Uh, so, Lieutenant Quigley, now we have our grilled cheese cooking. Yep. We have that on medium heat. Um, as we're cooking, can you just share with me a little bit, uh, for especially the little ones at home? Sure. Um, should there be a fire on the stove or in the house, what are some of the things that they should do right away uh, to keep them safe? Well, the first thing that they should do is get out of the house. If, if a fire starts on the stove or anywhere in the house for that matter, the most important thing to do is get out of the house. Once you get out of the house, um, you can go to a neighbor's house or find a grown-up and call 911, and the fire department will come. Okay. Yep. And so, so it's best that the, the little kids the don't, little even kids. Don't, don't even try to put it out. Don't even try to put it out. The most important thing to do is just get out of the house, let someone know, mm -hmm. and call 911, and then the fire department can come show up and take care of it. Okay. And can you talk a little bit about um, when somebody calls 911? Okay. Because um, we don't get to practice these things, obviously, in yep. real life. Um, what is some of the information that they should share when they get that person on the phone? What's sure, sure. So 911 can be used for a couple different um, types of emergencies. Today we're talking about fires. So 911 can be used for a fire if you have a medical emergency or if you need police. Uh, some of the things that you should know when you call 911 is your home address and what the nature of the emergency is. Is it a medical emergency? Is it a fire? Or do we need police officers? Okay, that's great information. And I'm just checking the grilled cheese here as, as we're going through it. Yeah, it looks good. Um, so far, so good. Starting so far, so good. To, starting to brown a little bit. Um, and then um, you've been, obviously you've been with the force for a few years now. Yep. Um, when you go out and you respond to uh, fires at people's houses, what are some of the common fires that you see and what are some of the ways that you think uh, could have avoided those situations? Sure, sure. So one of the most common fires that we see involve grease or cooking and then also electricity. So, so actually, let me jump in. So grease like maybe when there's bacon in the, or something, I yeah, when if, I make my marinara, I yep. have oil in the pan for us. So some oil in the pan. If you uh, remember earlier, yeah. we removed the cooking oil yeah. from up above. That's because if it gets hot enough, it can actually catch fire. Okay. Uh, bacon is also, um, when it gets cooked, it makes a grease. Mm -hmm. And then there's also deep frying. Some people make um, like French fries or buffalo tater tots. Buffalo chicken wings. Buffalo chicken yeah. wings, anything like yeah. that. So anytime you're cooking with oil or, or a type of grease, it has a potential to catch fire. Mm -hmm. One of the most important things to remember, if you ever do have a grease fire, if you're, a, if you're a little, little one, get out of the house as we talked about earlier. But if you're comfortable, if you're the one that's, that's doing the cooking, um, there's two ways to put out a grease fire and one way that you never want to put it out. First thing you never want to do is put water on a grease fire. Okay, yeah. And the reason is water and oil or grease don't mix and it won't actually put the fire out. What it'll do is it'll actually cause it to not explode, but it'll start, um, it could spread. Okay. So 
One of the best ways to put out a grease fire is with baking soda or something like that. Mm -hmm. You would just pour it over the top, smother it until the, until the flames go out. It cuts off the oxygen and then okay. the fire can't burn anymore. Another way you can do it, and we don't have uh, a lid for this pan in particular, but if you do have a lid um, that can go on your pan or your pot, you can put the, the lid on it and that'll also put it yeah. out. So actually, um, I do know, and you noticed I've been holding the spatula the whole time. Yep. Uh, that's because I know the Department of Fire Services has that campaign where they say put a lid on it. Correct. Should there be some type of fire on your stove. Yep. The other thing I learned from Cindy Ouellette over there, okay. um, who's in charge of education, she said it's always good to make sure you, you're holding your uh, utensil. That way it's always a reminder you don't get distracted if the phone rings or something like that. That is a great idea. So uh, we thank Cindy Ouellette for that, that information. Right. Uh, so right now, oh, this is coming on nice. I'm going to give this a little flip right now. Okay. Oh, Look at that. This class of comfort food is coming along nice. Um, earlier you had also mentioned a little bit about um, calling 911 and getting out of the house. Yep. Um, can you talk a little bit about um, escape plans? I know at the, at the Youth Public Safety Academy, yep. we have what we call, and we do this every Monday morning, we do our fun, fabulous, fantastic fire drill. Okay. So as we do, we do that, we tell the kids ahead of time we're going to do it, yep. um, but we also take, we bump up our game over there. We have a we have a prop that looks like a fire, yep. it's in a yep. box, and we put all the construction paper on and everything. And we actually tell them that you should always know, I think it's at least two exits, is at that correct? At least two ways out. Okay, yep. yeah. Yep. So we actually block one of the exits with that prop. That's a good so idea. So when the kids come out of the classroom, they actually see it and they get the practice at it. Can you talk a little bit about escape plans at home maybe? Sure, sure. So an escape plan is a great tool to use for everyone in the family, everyone that lives in the household. Um, and what an escape plan is, it's basically knowing at least two ways out of the house in the event of a fire. Kind of like Ken was just saying, um, sometimes the way that you would normally get out of your house could be blocked. Um, if you normally come in and out of your front door, well, there could be a fire in that area and you can't use it, so you have to use a back door. So what an escape plan does is it's basically a map of your house and you draw out all the different rooms in the house and two ways out of your house where your front door is where your back door is if you have garage um, even windows on the ground level you could use to, to get out so and then also on your escape plan everyone should have a meeting spot as well so when you oh, do get out of your house yes. away from the house maybe a neighbor's house your mailbox a telephone pole something like that so when everyone does get out of the house they know to go meet up in that one spot mm -hmm. and then they can all be accounted for. Or if someone is stuck inside, they will know that they're missing someone. Okay, and then they can share that information. And then they can but share. So should somebody go, say somebody is, is inside, Yep. or if there's a pet inside, right. should somebody go back in and get it before the fire department goes? No, you shouldn't. Okay. It, yep. it, it It's not a good idea. Okay. Um, the, the smoke can, really make it difficult and then the the heat and the fire um when we show up we wear all this special gear and i'm sure you guys have seen it before we have a special coat pants helmet mask and we're breathing air out of a tank on our back so we're not breathing in so we're not breathing in um all that smoke and stuff like that so if someone it or your pet is is stuck inside let the first person that shows up know from the fire department or if the police show up first please just pass that information let on the to them. Let them know and let the professionals handle it. Exactly. Okay. So one other question, let's say it's the middle of the night, you're up in your bedroom in the second, third floor, whatever, which is pretty common around the metropolitan uh, Massachusetts and yep. Boston. Um, and let's say the fire is in the hallway outside your door. Okay. Um, how best, um, you know, how best can you draw attention to yourself? So when the fire department arrives, in order to get that ladder up to that, that window. So if you can, if say, like he said, if, if you are trapped in an area of your house, in your bedroom, in the bathroom, the kitchen, anywhere, and you cannot get out through the door and your only option is the window, one of the best ways to, well, the first thing you should do is close the door. What that'll do is that'll keep the fire out, out of your room. It'll, it'll um, buy you a little more time. 
And some of the things that we do is we, we can, you can open the window and call out for help, yell. Um, if you could hang, you know, like a blanket out the window or, or anything like that, um, and just to, to get attention and let them know that you're up there and you can't get out. Awesome, great tips. Yeah. Now, if there is a fire and you find yourself in a smoky area as you're exiting, yep. should they stand up and run out the building? What's the no, best no, way no. to... So the best way is to get down, get out, and stay out. And what that means is get down on the ground and crawl. You want to stay as low as you can to the ground while you're getting out mm -hmm. because smoke, the first place it's going to go is up. Okay. And then so... If you're standing up, then you could be in that smoke, and smoke gets you disoriented. So don't be a giraffe in a fire. Exactly. Get don't be a long. giraffe. Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> okay. All right. Hey, we're almost done here. We're cranking on. These are awesome tips. We really want to thank you. And oh, you're really welcome. We want to thank Chief, Ka Chief Kavanaugh. We want to thank the Wilmington Fire Department. We've been great partners with the Middlesex Sheriff's Office yeah. for the years. Uh, we've been over to, to your middle schools, your elementary schools with our fire safety trailer. Um, you guys made that great donation of, of the smoke machine to us a few years ago that we can use on the fire safety trailer. Appreciate that so much. Oh, anytime. Uh, we put that to a lot of use. Yeah, I um, bet. So I, I think we're just about there. I think it's about time for us to put this on the plate and maybe give this, uh, cut this open. What do you think? I think that sounds like a great idea. Okay, so, oh, I should shut this off first, you right? Shut that off first, yeah. correct. So we do that, shut that off, and then maybe even move the pan off to the side? You could, yep. Okay. Yep. All right, that looks awesome. And now I cut things diagonally. I'm, an, I'm a diagonal cut guy. And this is so easy to make at home. And now that everybody's home more and, you know, I get a couple pickles. I should have brought some bacon. We could have put some bacon on there today because bacon goes with everything. It does. Lieutenant Quigley, thank you so much. This was awesome, as we said. Time, time to eat. Time to eat. Well, thank you, Ken, for coming here and cooking this amazing sandwich. I hope everyone had a chance to learn something and stay safe. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> it is pretty good. <laughs> thank you, Wilmington Fire Department, Lieutenant Quigley and Ken, for that awesome demonstration on how to keep your kitchen safe as well as cooking up a delicious grilled cheese sandwich. I guess I know what I'll be making for lunch. Be sure to tune in to our next virtual session focusing on bike and pool safety. Thank you, and we'll see you all again soon.